So about a year ago I started with game development and I just thought I could show you some of the games I made so far. But before I do that, why did I even become a game dev in first place? To be honest, I don't really remember, but I definitely saw Danny's first videos and I think I just wanted to make games too. And after watching tutorials by Brackies and other awesome YouTubers, I made my first game. It was called The Beginning, let's have a look at it. I basically just used the free asset from the asset store and made really good 2D movement. Um, no, it's horrible. And also the character rotates the whole time, but luckily there's a secret ninja technique. Works always. Uh, sometimes. Next game. Now, I know normally after the 2D platformer that every game dev does in the beginning comes the FPS shooter, but for some reason I wanted to make a car game. So here it is. It's definitely a future car game because the car is floating and also it's really fast. It even has a nitro boost. Version 2 of the game, the camera rotates now. Version 3, there's now ground material and skybox. And you can do really cool stunts. I didn't really know what I was doing back then, so I actually used a rigid body combined with transform.translate, which led to some interesting behavior, I would say. Version 4. The camera moves now with the car, but it doesn't really rotate. And yeah, you can still fly. And there's also a secret platform. Insane improvement. Version 5. Once again, better camera and now the game actually looks pretty cool. 6. Main screen and better graphics. I even fixed the movement here, so now the car is using wheel colliders. But since I just copied code from a YouTube tutorial, I totally messed up the values and it feels like sliding over ice. Seven. It's now playable and looks kinda cool actually. Kinda cool, actually. Anyway, let's continue with the next game. It was for a school project and I made it together with a friend. It's a 1v1 game and we both made our own characters, but most of the other graphics are assets. Since I had no clue how to make a multiplayer game, and I still don't know how to do that, you need to play both characters with one keyboard. Yay. So I'm just going to show them one after another. This is my char and he has a basic attack and after every 4 or 5 hits he does this kind of combo attack. Also he has 3 special abilities. He can throw a kunai and then teleport to it. Hmm, where did I get this idea from? The second one is... The third one is basically the first one, but you throw your sword. Next character. This one is the one my friend made, and it's basically a mix of Goku, Luffy or Ruffy, Zangets and Madara. His first ability is this energy wave, write a comment if you know where that comes from. <laughs> the second one is maybe the most creative ability so far. You can dash and leave behind the shadow clone, and then use the ability again to teleport to your clone, spawning two new clones that can damage others. The third one... <laughs> okay, okay, next game, guys. But no, wait, I forgot to say you can also play against enemies if you want. And then came the point where I had a great idea. No, seriously, it was a pretty stupid one. But for some reason I started my own video game company together with the same friend as before. And every good video game company needs a video game, you probably already knew that. So here it is. All you have to do is collect the coins and guess how it's called? Coin Collector. 
I spent quite a lot of time developing it and it's maybe the only game I really finished so far. Or at least nearly finished. In the end, I think the game turned out pretty cool and it even has free worlds and a lot of different levels, even special challenges. There are also a few really cool gameplay elements like these crates that you need to break to free the coins or the levers that switch on and off different blocks. The art is okay I think but it's not like really good. The next game I started working on was Dodge Legends. Once again, really creative name. I don't think I need to explain how the game works, because it's pretty obvious. But yeah, while developing the game I learned quite a lot about coding movement, like wall jumping, dashing, double jumping and crouching. Sadly, I never really finished the game. I mean, it's playable and I even started a bit with the level design, but if you're a programmer you probably know the feeling of like, you started the game, but while developing it you just became much better in coding and now the game just feels trash. Even if you were super excited and proud at the beginning. But I don't think that's a problem. It's just a normal process of learning and getting better. Also, I wasn't sad at all. I was already excited to start my next game and this time make it even better, so no problem. I just think that's why you shouldn't start a really big project as a new game dev, right? But I definitely didn't take this advice serious back then, because right after Dodge Legends or even while developing Dodge Legends, I can't really remember, but I started two other games. Such a clever idea, it's insane. But I quit both of them really fast, so they were basically just prototypes. Yeah, and that's what I did in the last 8 months I guess. I won't talk too much about my latest games, because there are already videos about them on my channel. So if you're interested you can check them out too. That would be the Amazing Thief minigame, the Corona Simulation game, the FPS shooter in one day, my Ludum Dairy entry Protect Your Children and also Anti Carlson and Fight Yourself, but they are slightly out of the 1 year range. And now thank you so much for watching, if you want to follow and support me on my further game dev journey make sure to subscribe. And also you can tell me in the comments what your first games were like, I would love to hear that.